This one is how Mike Tyson got revenge for Muhammad Ali. It's October 2nd, 1980. Ali fights Larry Holmes. We go to Albany, New York. We live in Cassidy. We go 30 miles north to Albany, New York, and we watch it on pay per view. After the fight, we got in the car. No one talked. So we drove 30 miles back to Catskill. We all opened the door. We all went to our rooms. We never talked. The next morning, the cuss is on the phone with Muhammad Ali. Cuss is calling Larry home so many bad. How do you let that bum hit on you, Chad Ali? How do you let that bum? Why you let oh, that that's bum when he lost to Holmes. You know, he's almost getting sensitive, you know, emotional. Why is the bum almost crying? He's a bum. Why you let him hit you? Why you let him beat him? So I talked to Ali on the phone. I said, when I get big, I'm going to... I'm gonna get him for you, I'm gonna revenge you, I'm gonna... I'm gonna restore your honor. After a career outlasting oh, and enduring some of the hardest punchers and some of the most brutal fights, trying to avenge him. Ali had finally fallen off completely. He had trouble coordinating the muscles he used in speech. The Parkinson's had begun to take hold his kidneys were failing. His own doctor quit his corner rather than have anything to do with it. Mm. Larry Holmes learned at the sight of the great as a sparring partner. But the time had come to step out of Ali's shadow and into the spotlight. It came to a head in 1980 when Larry got his shot at the title. That same legendary stubbornness that kept Clay in wars as a young man was still keeping Ali in fight after fight as an old one. There comes a point where enough is enough. For Ali, Manila True. and Joe Frazier were enough five years earlier. Now, True. the student had grown into the master. The master into a frail old man. Looking back, we wish the man would have stopped a little earlier, but like, for far longer I think it'd always be like that. To watch. Legends, Especially for boxers. And Ali is learning that even he cannot be forever young. Nobody was happy about it. Least of all, Larry Holmes. He'd asked the ref to stop it and even cried during a post-fight interview. Really respect Ali a whole lot. It hurt you to punish him that way. He didn't want to have to beat him up. I feel that he fought the one of the baddest heavyweight in the world today. And you that cannot man. take credit from him. Amen. I've never seen the fight, but it sounds the like the ref should Muhammad have stopped Ali the fight. Overflowed out many it's like Ali wouldn't have gave up. <laughs> it was in upstate New York and the Catskills where a teenage mutant ninja person is brooding. Teenage mutant ninja person. Mike Tyson was adopted by Cus I mean, he is pretty... Cus had been training champions since like the 50s. Crazy mutant, I guess Floyd you could Tyson say. Tyson was the youngest heavyweight champion ever Quite the age specimen. 21. As an older fighter, Floyd and Cus <coughs> fought Ali twice. Falling short both times. Ali's face while he does it, man. It's so fight. ferocious looking. Patterson doesn't want it stopped, but they're right. They're stopping it for the protection of the lad himself. Ali was stripped of his title for refusing to fight in Vietnam. Badly in need of money, an idea hits him. Ali calls Cus. They create a documentary called AKA Cassius Clay, which was two hours of Cus and Ali verbally sparring over hypothetical fights between Ali and past champions. Huh? At one point, the sparring goes physical and Cus manages to land a jab on a chastened Ali. Cus told Ali he'd lose to Joe Frazier. As usual, Cus was right. Man, Cus was smart. He knew a lot about boxing. He even knew who was gonna be like problems for Mike Tyson. Honestly, a lot of people, even people who weren't like his students, he knew a lot. Jeez. 
Jesus. Again, Ali calls cuss. This time, from a hotel in Zaire, the night before his immortal performance in the rumble in the jungle. In a rare moment of shaken confidence, Ali asked his old friend how to handle the wrecking machine. Cus told Ali bullies don't like getting stood up to. He told Ali to hit Foreman hard early True. to get his respect. All those legendary lead right hands Ali landed early were a result of that conversation. You just get him with a good hit to like gain that respect and then you just walk him down. Because then they can't fight off the back foot. Bullies don't like back to be bullied. Back in 1980, the morning after the most tragic fight I think where I've seen nobody fight. died, Ali calls his old friend once more. Looks familiar. Mike overhears Cus getting emotional. I'm on the floor, I'm crying. I, and he was saying, but I said, when I get big, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get him for you. I'm going to revenge you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restore your honor. From that moment on, Mike Tyson was focused on nothing but beating Larry Holmes like a dog in the street. Under Cus's perceptive gaze, Tyson perfected the peekaboo style. It was a style made for Tyson 30 years before he was alive. It emphasized head movement and pressure-based counterpunching. It allowed a shorter man to get up close mm. and murderous on the Body inside. Shot. Disgusting. At the time, the heavyweight division oh. was full of tall jabbers. It turned an opponent's every jab into an opportunity to counter. Mike did not need to land much to end a fight. When you combine that with Mike's natural ferocity, he became a generational recipe distilled for destruction. On the other hand, Larry was a gritty champion with a genius jab. Unforgiven by the fans for his vivisection of Ali, Larry did all he could. He rose to the championship occasion in an epic 15-round war with Ali's old rival, Ken Norton, to take the title. Not even that could put aside anger of the Legion of Ali fans. Larry got bitter. Fans weren't shy about their dislike of him. Larry was more than Man, happy to clap back. <clears throat> Holmes had his undefeated streak broken by Michael Spinks. Well, that's a good fighter. I've seen that, some of that guy's fights. I think this one's actually it. He'd come up from light heavyweight to win a tight decision and the championship, ending Larry's run at Rocky Marciano's record. After losing an That's even crazy. tighter Man decision from light heavyweight to be an undefeated Larry heavy retires heavyweight. Furious in 1986. It appeared Tyson would never get the chance to avenge his idol. In Slithers, Don King, three million dollars and a title shot at Tyson proved too good for Larry to pass on. He was 38 years old and had been retired for two years. The chip on his shoulder and zeros in his bank account were too big to ignore. Against everyone's better judgment, Larry, just like Ali before him, couldn't turn down one last fight against a killer. Ali made the trip and was introduced before the fighters. Before he left the ring, he leaned in and reminded Tyson what he promised years ago. He hadn't forgotten. And then January 22nd, I'm fighting him, and then Ali comes into the ring and says, get him for me. He's going to be in there with a the beast. I'm an experienced Damn. professional fighter. I am no kid. I do not play. So if he wants to fight any way he wants to fight, I am capable of fighting any way anybody wants to fight. Tyson took his first chunks out of Larry's ribcage as he tried to circle off the ropes. Mm. Now the sound of the His body shot. Look at the look on Larry's face. It sounded terrible. In total fear. Larry was a former Penn State champion wrestler. And against Mike Tyson, his grappling pedigree was the only thing that kept him standing. <laughs> Mike really hasn't been able to 
catch him. Larry Holmes had the best jab in boxing history, and Mike made getting around it look easy. He's dipping under. Straight walking past it every time. Four, Tyson landed the straight right that made mm. his words come true. Goodness. Tyson swarmed on That'll Holmes do it. and finished the old man quickly. That'll do it. Goodness gracious. It was the only knockout of Larry Holmes's career. Mm. Goodness. Oh. Wait, he got back up from the other time. Goodness. So he went down three times. Golly. When I watch somebody like Ali, I watch somebody that's really the real deal. Then I know I'm not great. Well, he avenged him. When you see greatness, then you know that's not me. He kept his word. Holy. That's just my ego. No, that's just my ego. <clears throat> Ali will fight you till he die. You have to kill him. He's not going to quit. I want to believe that I'm that guy. My ego tells me that, but the, the reality of it is that I love my beautiful wife. I love this life that I have. I can do almost anything, and I might, I might not want to give this up just to prove that I'm a tough guy. But I leave wood. That's what I know. Everybody can call me what they want, and this and that. I'm the greater than Mike as I am, but I know. I know what greatness is. I'll leave with something different, though. I like, his greatness, greatness stretched beyond boxing. It was fucking wild. He was, he was quite the person. Oh, that's it? Oh. Well, that was a good video.